Chapter 1. Great leaders are not born, they are made. Leadership capacities differ, but almost all of us will occupy a leadership position in our lifetime. If you're committed to growing in your career, you will climb the ladder to lead a group of people. If you own a business and desire to expand, then you will soon have employees, and your leadership ability, or inability, will show. It's hard to find adults who aren't actively pursuing a career or doing business. But even if you don't belong to either of these two categories, you will someday be a parent who needs to lead their children. The bottom line is, we will all lead and influence people in our own ways. With that in view, you will realize just how important it is to learn about leadership. No doubt, some people are natural leaders, others aren't. But both groups need to know something about leadership. Leadership is a skill that can be learned. Jocko Willink is a retired Navy SEAL, a member of the Special Forces trained for combat on the sea, in the air, and on land. He learned leadership throughout his entire career. He applied the leadership principles that he learned by observation and study, and later began teaching other SEALs the leadership principles that worked for him. But after retirement, he found that leadership in the SEALs isn't much different from what's obtainable in politics and business. After all, leadership is all about people, and humans are the same in every sector. So, he expanded his horizons and began teaching civilian leaders the principles he had learned over the decades. With his former SEAL teammate, Leif Babin, he started a leadership consultancy called Echelon Front and wrote two leadership books, Extreme Ownership and The Dichotomy of Leadership. Leadership Strategy and Tactics is his third book on leadership, and in this summary, you will find leadership lessons he learned directly from his career in the Navy. Get ready for a transformation in your leadership as you learn and apply these timeless leadership lessons. The goal of leadership seems simple, to get people to do what they need to do to support the mission and the team. Jocko Willink Chapter 2. Your Character Affects Your Leadership Ability When Jocko Willink first came to Navy SEAL Team 1, they had a leader whose character didn't encourage his followers one bit. The man was arrogant and he always reminded them through words and actions that he was the head of the team. The troops couldn't get along with his attitude, so they reported him to higher authorities. The man was removed after a few days. Lucky for Jocko Willink and colleagues, the new platoon commander given to them was a good leader who had years of experience under his belt. Delta Charlie led the team successfully, and Jocko Willink learned many leadership lessons by just observing him. One of the primary leadership lessons Willink learned was to respect the opinions of followers. Unlike his predecessor, Delta Charlie allowed members of the team to come up with a strategy for any mission they would embark on. After they had brainstormed and developed a plan, Charlie would now go through it, identify the potholes in their plans, and suggest the way forward. As a leader, learn to give your followers the freedom to express their thoughts. It makes them feel important and involved. According to Jocko Willink, giving followers the freedom to express their ideas encouraged the team to put in everything they had. After all, when you're the one who came up with a plan, you won't have anyone to blame when things don't seem to go well. You find a way to fix it yourself. The fundamental lesson here for all leaders is that the ideas of your followers or subordinates are important. Don't turn deaf ears to them, acting like you know it all. Every leader should seek to work with their followers as a team member not as a boss who calls the shots and never cares about what others say or feel. Character is power. It makes friends, draws patronage and support, and opens the way to wealth, honor, and happiness. J. Howe Chapter 3. Leaders build good relationships with everyone on board. As mentioned in the previous chapter, leaders who achieve their visions are those who are willing to work with their followers as a team. And there's a natural progression to this. It starts with trust. Trust builds relationships, and relationships build a team. If all you have is a group of people who don't trust you or one another, you don't have a team, and it will be hard to fulfill your organizational goals. Leaders in many organizations have both subordinates and superiors. Your goal should be to build a relationship with these two categories. It's all hinged on trust. Trust is the lifeblood of leadership. Practice trusting your subordinates by delegating tasks and not supervising them. Show them you believe in their capabilities, and they will feel motivated to put in their best. Of course, don't give them tasks that will have severe consequences if they fail. Start with simple tasks, then move to more difficult ones later on. If your subordinates fail at a task, don't belittle them or complain. Take it as an opportunity to teach and guide them. 
Another way to build relationships with your subordinates is by attempting to learn and understand their job descriptions. Trust is also critical when it comes to building relationships with your superiors. Many leaders try to tell their bosses what will sound good, whether it is true or not. For instance, a sales leader might tell his boss that all is well with the sales team when they aren't making any sales, but he said it just so his boss will be happy. Don't do those kinds of things. Tell your bosses the truth. It may not be what they like to hear at that moment, but the whole truth is better than telling a lie or half-truth that will be uncovered later. Chapter 4. Good Leadership and Effective Decision-Making Go Hand in Hand Leaders Should Be Decisive You will always hear this advice in leadership seminars. No doubt, the leader is the head, the primary decision-maker in the team. But there are decision lessons every leader needs to learn. Telling leaders to be decisive is not enough. For one, it's not in all situations that a leader can take decisive actions immediately. There are delicate situations where you need thorough thinking and proper situation assessment before making any decisions. Rushing to make unguided decisions might mean risking the lives of your troops in the military or losing a major investor in the business sphere. The point is, you need a proper situation analysis before taking action. When the time comes to make a decision, pause and ask yourself what potential consequences or benefits your decision will bring before pushing through with it. Sometimes the situation is so critical, you need to make an immediate decision. Don't rule that out, but that's the time you have to be more careful or risk running into loss. Here is what you can do. Take iterative decisions immediately, based on your intuition. The iterative decision you take shouldn't have many consequences. Iterative decisions are small decisions you make in the interim while assessing the situation and trying to understand it better. When it comes to decision-making, leaders are sometimes so insecure they don't want to heed the ideas of their subordinates for fear of being controlled. Don't always insist your ideas are the best. Sometimes someone else has the best ideas. You will need to let your ego down to understand this. It helps to keep in mind that you're working as a team to move the organization towards its goal. That being settled, don't just kick away ideas from people. Allow them to present their ideas, then step back to analyze and determine which is better. If you find your subordinates' ideas are better, drop your ego and follow through with theirs. If you learn to be humble as a leader, you will accomplish more goals and, most significantly, win the trust of your subordinates. Did you know? SWOT diagram, Pareto analysis, and decision matrix are tools you should master to facilitate better decision making. Chapter 5. How Subordinate Leaders Can Manage Relationships Up and Down the Chain If you're a leader who reports to someone in a higher position, you have a lot of work to do. You need to make sure you have happy relationships with your boss and the people you're leading. This is a tough thing to do sometimes, and it's even more complicated if you have a boss who isn't a good leader. Your subordinates see that your boss isn't leading well. You know it too, and you're constantly butting heads with him. How can you influence the team to accomplish their goals in this kind of environment? First, give your boss credit when he demands it and even when he doesn't demand it. Every leader, good or bad, likes to take credit for a successful mission, and it's hard to give in when it's obvious the team only succeeded because of individual contributions from your subordinates. But still, you have to let it go. If you don't, you will hurt your leader's ego, which is not good for the team. To preserve upward relationships, give your leaders credit when they demand it, whether they deserve it or not. The second thing you should avoid is saying negative things about your leader in the presence of your subordinates. If you have issues with your leader, deal with them behind closed doors. If your leader gives orders you don't like, tell them about it privately. And if they insist, push through with the plan. However, never tell your subordinates you don't like the plan because that will get them disinterested. Show respect to people who don't even deserve it, not as a reflection of their character but as a reflection of yours. Dave Willis Chapter 6. Proper Communication Prevents Rumors, Arguments, and Conflicts Communication is vital for any relationship. This is particularly true for relationships that exist among workers and their superiors. For one, if you don't give clear instructions or guidance to your team, they won't understand what you demand of them. Most employees will not want to sound dumb by returning to ask for clarity. They would rather waste energy doing the wrong things. This will make the organization lose time, and probably other resources too. But situations like that will be avoided if you learn to communicate properly. Similarly, proper communication will prevent rumors from spreading in the organization. For example, 
If you're laying off workers or stopping an ongoing project, clearly communicate the reasons for your actions. Don't give room for assumptions and rumors. Stating the reasons for your actions as a leader will give your followers motivation and security. Proper communication also boosts motivation. Let's say you're the CEO of a company that's working hard on developing new software. If you don't communicate why the project is important and what it hopes to achieve, both for your company and the end consumers, the workers won't see why they need to keep working overtime to make it happen. At best, they will only work because they need the salary, but you don't want that kind of drive among your workers. Organizations must have effective communication channels. Most of them do. Check your organization's communication medium to ensure it's effective. If you're not satisfied with what's available, you could invest in software tools like Slack. The subscription fee you pay will be nothing compared to the impact of proper communication on your organization. So how can a leader become great if they lack the natural characteristics necessary to lead? The answer is simple. A leader builds a great team that counterbalances their weaknesses. Jocko Willink Conclusion Character is everything for a leader. If you lack the right attitude, you will frustrate your career. Therefore, you need to learn and build quality character through study, observation, and asking the right questions. The old saying is true. If you want to be a good leader, never stop learning and making corrections where necessary. Don't let your ego get in the way. Allow your subordinates to have a will and freedom of their own. Seeing your subordinates as humans with peculiar skill sets that enable them to function properly will make it easier for you to trust them to perform excellently in their roles and projects. In addition to that, it's also important that you see them as real humans with lives that don't just revolve around their place in the organization. They have loved ones, dreams, aspirations, and everything that makes us humans. Most leaders know this just superficially. Be the sort of leader that cares about the personal lives of the people you work with, not just the work they can do for you. It's not out of place if you dedicate a time of the month when you talk with your subordinates about personal issues disturbing them. Sure, you can't do this if you're leading a big team, but letting people know they can reach out if they need to talk will go a long way. Lastly, respect your superiors. Give them credit even when you feel they don't deserve it. Communicate effectively. Don't starve your subordinates with a lack of information. Try this. Ask for anonymous feedback from your team members about your leadership. The recurring responses you get will help you know where to adjust.